So the fridge has arrived. Interesting. Mains voltage domestic fridge. So what we're going to do in a slightly unusual turn of events is we are going to fit a standard household domestic fridge into our camper van and we're going to run it off the inverter. Why am I running a mains fridge in a camper van? Let me explain to you a couple of reasons why. All the research that I did on the internet, I looked up all the specifications of all the different types of fridges. I looked at their power consumption. I couldn't find power consumption for domestic fridges listed anywhere. I could find an annual kilowatt hour, but I couldn't find what wattage was the motor. I went to a local electrical retailers. I explained to the guy what exactly it is I wanted to do. And he told me to pull the fridge out and have a look at the back of it, which I did. So we had a look at a couple of fridges. It's a 70-30 fridge freezer and it has a power consumption of 75 watts. Now that's a power consumption of 75 watts when it's running. One of the things a lot of people don't tell you about is the fact that when you have the fridge cold and it's full, it maintains that level of cold and only needs to be topped up every so often. So the fridge isn't constantly running. It's only running when it's the temperature inside has risen past a certain point. It kicks in and cools it down. So over the next while, I'm going to do a series of tests to try and see how much cooling, how much power consumption the fridge actually uses um, while it's full and running connected directly to the batteries without solar, without battery charging, without a uh, battery to battery charger from the out engine alternator. So this is basically to see if the domestic fridge will work satisfactorily off the leisure batteries in the camper van. You may ask why I'm doing this. There's a very good reason for it. This fridge freezer was 169 euros, 150 pounds, $175, $180. It's a fridge, it's a freezer. It's got a decent capacity. I'm going to open up the fridge now and go through it. But just for the meantime, I think that this experiment is well worth doing because the three way fridge is 300, 400 pounds. Um, 12 volt compressor fridge is six, seven, 800 pounds. They don't do the job any better. Okay, yes, if you're going to be living solely off 12 volts you're not going to have any hookups you're not going to have any power connected maybe that might have a certain amount of maybe that might make sense but to me it doesn't how i'm going to do that is i'm going to test it out i'm going to open up the fridge i'm going to connect it to the inverter and see exactly what it does what sort of effect it has on the battery how much current it draws so hopefully it'll give us a good idea of whether it's going to be suitable box is still sealed 230 volt fridge or in the US 110 volt same thing 240 volts 75 watts there we go tiny little fridge tiny little motor little evaporator 75 watts power consumption it looks good to me. Let's plug it in and do some tests. The floor of the camper van is a complete and utter mess. But as you can see, the fridge doesn't take up a huge amount of space. That's where the kitchen unit's gonna be, sitting on top of the fridge. So yeah, I think it's pretty okay. Plugged into the inverter. We're going to switch the inverter on and we're going to have a look at what our voltage does. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Fridge is on. Drawing 8.2 amps, 7.9, 100 watts. So the power is dropping. It's sitting around the 100 watt mark. Everything looks 
Really, really good. Our power consumption is dropping. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, let the fridge do what it needs to do, and then I'll come back and we'll have a review of this in a short time. Hey, we have light. So I'm going to keep that door closed, see how it goes. Possibly something that most people, maybe they do know, maybe they don't know, but here's a little interesting fact. The more things you have in your fridge and your freezer, the less amount of energy it requires to keep that cold. Here's the science basically why. So we have a freezer compartment and we have one bag of frozen peas in it. What the problem is, is this freezer compartment is basically made up of air. Air has no mass effectively and it's very difficult to control the temperature of it. But inside this bag we have solid frozen peas, which I've taken out of the freezer inside. So all around this we have air. Very hard to cool air, or to keep air cool because it's naturally an insulator. But if we fill the fridge, if we fill the freezer up with frozen goods, there's, very, there's less air inside the freezer compartment and therefore the freezer doesn't have as much work to do to maintain the cold temperature of the items inside the freezer. Therefore, a full freezer requires less energy to keep cold. If you didn't know that already, there's a useful little tip. Having an empty freezer actually costs more money. Maybe not as much money as it costs to fill it, but it certainly costs more to run an empty freezer. Here's another interesting little fact. In our situation, what we will do is when we're connected to mains power, we'll have the van plugged into the workshop outside, on an outside socket. So maybe the night before we'll transfer the food that we think we're going to bring with us. Milk, ice cream, whatever we want to put in the fridge. Alcoholic beverages. Uh, a red and white branded uh, cola drink. So what's this going to achieve? It's going to basically bring down the temperature inside the fridge and the freezer to the operating temperature that we want to keep the goods at. So we'll fill the fridge freezer full of stuff. It'll be running off the mains. So the, temp the fridge will be at temperature from the previous night. Requires a little bit of planning, but hey, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Then we switch over to the inverter and the batteries. But all it has to do is maintain the temperature that's now inside the fridge freezer. That requires an awful lot less energy than to bring the temperature of the air inside that fridge freezer down to its chilling point, meanwhile having nothing in it. So we fill the fridge freezer from the night before, connect it to the mains that night, in the morning disconnect the mains, unhook from land power and off we go. Then the batteries, the ledger batteries and the inverter only have to keep the fridge maintained with its cold. And that will be fine because the batteries will be charging while we're driving, we'll be getting solar gain, everything will be absolutely perfect. We stop somewhere for a day or two, the solar will still be getting power into the battery, the fridge is the only thing that's going to be constantly on. This is something I've not seen done before and I've looked at the internet for. Some people put domestic fridges in stationary vehicles, uh, mobile homes, trailers, that kind of stuff. But for a full on camper van with its own domestic fridge for 169 euros, pounds, dollars, whatever your local currency is, I actually think the cost benefit is well worth it, provided of course you have enough batteries. If you've got only 100 amp hour leisure battery, you may find it's a little bit of a struggle to run this. Another leisure battery is still cheaper than the difference between one of these and a 12 volt compressor fridge. It's actually probably the difference between two of them. Not only that, the extra battery power gives you a lot of opportunity to use lots of other things within the camper van. So hopefully, with a reasonable amount of experimentation, a small bit of planning, this should work out just perfect. We'll give you an update when we're on the road, but in the meantime, we're going to do some tests. I'm going to go back, have a look at the inverter in a couple of hours, see what way the battery is. And bear in mind that I've only got one of the batteries connected, so we're only on 155 amp hour, not 310. 
because obviously we haven't got everything set up and ready to go. This is just an initial first test. So in the next video, we're going to stock the fridge. We're going to run it on mains overnight, get it down low to temperature, switch it over to the inverter, run the two batteries in parallel. So we have th the full 310 amp hours and see how long it takes before the batteries start to get low enough for us to need to recharge them. Bearing in mind that we have absolutely nothing at the minute. The van is stationary. There's no solar panels on the roof. Nothing is connected. So this is just a pure battery inverter fridge test. Thanks for watching. Maybe you consider to subscribe to find out what happens in part two. Have a look at some of the other videos and we'll see you in part two.